Hello, my name is Jonathan Jesse, Practice Principal for ITS Partners. I want to thank you for uh, spending time watching this video. This video is another of our series on an overview of DLP. Um, we'll be focusing on uh, policies and how policies are used within the semantic DLP product. I'm going to go ahead and get started by logging in. If I remember how to type my password. All right, if you watch the other video, uh, the other videos we've covered on uh, an overview of DLP, you've seen these screens. So I just want to jump right into creating policies. So I go manage and then policy, policy list, and it shows me all of the policies that I have active. Um, you can see that I have uh, four policies um, set up and in working. And I want to spend some time a little bit, first of all, on configuring my driver's license policy. And then secondly, I want to dive into creating some a new policy and the different technologies that Semantic DLP uses to create a policy. So let's go ahead and, and, and modify my driver's license policy. If you saw the overview video, you saw that I was getting some false positives. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, you, see, you see that I have within here um, one, two, three, four, five different OR statements. Uh, we can build those, those as OR statements. We can also build as, those as uh, and statements as well. So driver's license matches this and email address matches, for example. Let's just go ahead and take a look at um, at this. So you can see here we have uh, within this within driver's license, driver's licenses are interesting. A lot of or of a lot of states have a pattern that they can match. Let's go ahead and talk about the Michigan one just because that's where I'm from. Uh, down here, Michigan, Florida, Minnesota. Um, they have a, a data identifier. Um, everybody in my family, uh, as far as I know, our driver's licenses begin with J200. Why? I, I don't know, um, but that's the pattern. If you go into like an Illinois and a trooper pulls you over or you, you tell a, uh, an Illinois trooper uh, police officer, maybe that's the more correct uh, term, what your driver's license number is, they can tell you the year that you were born solely by looking at the driver's license. Um, Let's talk our way through this. The first thing that I want to change is I want to build in some severity statements. So let's change the default severity um, to medium, just as an example. So any ticket or any incident that is generated is going to have a default severity of, of medium. I want to add a severity. So if it's greater than or equal to 100, it's going to be a high severity. And then if it is, uh, we're going to set it to low. If it is between... Um, one and ten. So any any uh, incident that has a match count of one to ten is going to have a low severity. Any incident that has a match count of uh, over a hundred is going to have a high, and everything else will be a medium severity. So let's go ahead and and, and leave that set up there. Uh, this allows us to set different statuses and also to build our workflow a bit differently. Uh, if everything is always a high severity, I'll quickly get overwhelmed with, with instances in the system that I need to review. I'll actually change the breadth here to medium. You saw, if you watched the other video, I had um, a bunch of log files and also um, I think some, some temporary cookies and some setup files, stuff like that. They're actually triggering because they matched the number combination. Um, Let's go ahead and change this to medium. Medium actually is going to require us to have a presence of a driver's license keyword. So your next question is, Jonathan, how do I know what keywords? So simply click on this more information section here, and it's going to list what keywords actually um, uh, we're tracking. So still a 13 character um, string beginning with a value, followed by 12 numbers. Minnesota license may also have this format as well. So keywords requires driver's license, any of these keywords down here, and then any of these other validators as well. This helps us to narrow down the, uh, the false positive match count and to really get us to a true violation. We can also require um, other validations or validators that are not listed including uh, exclude, required, include, those types of information about um, to help us narrow down that, that information. 
Also, I can say, okay, count all matches and only generate an incident if they have X number of, of matches. I uh, was working with a customer that uh, when, when they turned this on at a network monitor level, they had so many incidences. The flood was so high that they said, you know, we only want to see incidences that have at least 100 matches. Um, and then once we resolved that you know, and spent some time cleaning up either broken business processes, user education, got our baseline down, um, they were able to then to now, um, after about a year or so, they're looking at uh, a match count with one. So they've used the DLP system just to say, okay, we have so many problems, we gotta mark this down to just a match count of, of 100, and now they're down to actually looking at individual ones. Let's go ahead and click OK to save this. Um, we can add exceptions and whether it matches a, a specific expression. Um, I've worked oftentimes there it is um, a, a protocol or um, it is matching a, a particular um, a file size or, or endpoint information. A protocol example, let's go ahead and create one. Uh, it's going to be, this is going to um, exclude All right, so we're going to look at uh, over email, right? Because I want to uh, look to see if it's SMTP based as the protocol, and we're going to add a sender user matches pattern. So I am going to say if it comes from asterisk.mil or asterisk.gov. Uh, don't give this as an email, or, or sorry, uh, don't generate an incident. So you can see now, exclude emails from .mil.gov, um, and if it matches a particular pattern there. Um, this was an example of, of a government uh, organization we worked with um, that didn't want to see emails that were heading, <coughs> excuse me, outbound or inbound from .mil.gov. Let's go ahead and and, and talk about groups here. Uh, I can set this up uh, to only match a certain group of individuals. Uh, the example being maybe my HR people have uh, uh, higher standard of policies or um, my security people have a higher um, standard of, of policies that I want to track against confidential data and we can add those in there. Um, response rules, this is uh, something happens and I want to do something about it. So let's go ahead. Um, I don't have any other created. We'll, we'll spend some time on that later. But this is set up at the endpoint level. It's going to notify my endpoint users. Um, if I had additional ones, I could simply just select the drop down and, and add that response rule. All right. So that policy is set up. Um, it doesn't have a description because I was lazy and didn't tap one out. Um, Let's talk about policy groups for a minute. We can have different policy groups that can be assigned to either uh, different um, vectors or different servers. So uh, I've mentioned earlier that when I create a policy, it applies um, at the default policy group applies to all um, all vectors of data loss, data at the endpoint, uh, data at rest, and data in motion. What we can do is we can create multiple policy groups and then assign those either to different um, servers or different vectors. So an example would be that um, in my organization in Chicago, um, they, handle, they handle trading information. So I want to monitor information in that Chicago area um, differently than I want to mar uh, monitor uh, data in the Grand Rapids office or uh, maybe one military base deals with something and I want to I want to track that separate than the other ones um, we can add different policy groups and apply those policy groups to only that server uh, in that corporation in Chicago uh, in that military base in Arizona um, in that military base in South Carolina or however your organization is is, is set up and defined what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a policy and um, adding a policy won't force you to learn a new language. It will just force you to think about how your confidential data is set up. 
So let's go ahead and talk about some templates that we have um, already provided by Semantic DLP. It's quite a list. Um, I don't know if, if you can read them. Let's go ahead and zoom in a minute. Um, different policies that we have within the system. So uh, DISA, the Defense Information Systems Agency, has a list of uh, message classifications, uh, categories, and markings. Um, uh, uh, EAR and ITAR, um, you know, import, export, administration regulations, um, Graham Leach, Belyly, HIPAA, uh, ITAR, right? These are the uh, uh, areas that I can only export information to, or I'm not allowed to export information. Uh, FIPS 199 regulations, um, state part, uh, state data privacy, U.S. intelligent control markings. A um, couple things that if you are in the uh, Department of Defense area, um, you can see we have some templates pre-built um, around uh, different things that might fall under your, your area. Um, and then uh, customer information, confidential data, acceptable use policies, um, those types of templates that we can do. Um, I don't want to bore our time or spend our time um, on a template, so let's go ahead and add a blank policy. I want to talk my way through this. Um, so let's go ahead and give it a name. Let's just call it uh, Demo Policy for Video uh, Creating. Um, I'm a big fan of creating a description because, um, and in that description, actually be descriptive. I know it's kind of redundant, but if someone follows you, doesn't know what to do um, or what that policy did, uh, they might accidentally turn it off or delete it because they don't know what's going on. Uh, creating a demo policy for videos I'm doing. All right, so got our description. We've got our detection, our groups, and our response rules. It is assigned to the default policy group. Why? Because that's all I have. Let's go ahead and add a rule. Maybe. All righty. So to uh, get things up and rocking and rolling. Uh, the first one is Jonathan can't spell correctly. That's the first one. Um, the first one actually is a describe content match, DCM. So that's our first way of doing it. Uh, these are driver's license, social security numbers, something that I can write a, a match pattern on it. So security numbers, always made up of nine characters, driver's license in those states that we have driver's license, have states, have, have a pattern behind it. Credit cards, they're always the same, right? American Express is a three. Uh, MasterCard is a five. Visa is a four. I might have the MasterCard and Visa flipped around. Uh, but it allows us then to write a policy based on a pattern. Uh, this could also be maybe I am uh, I have a, uh, a particular policy or a particular information in my organization that I want to track at. Something that I can write a, a regular expression against. This is my described content. Um, and yes, the DLP system allows me to write um, a regular expression within the system. IDM and EDM, uh, these, are, these are products or technologies that really sets the semantic DLP product apart. An index data match helps me deal with um, unstructured data, right? Um, this is data that uh, might not be in numbers, columns, rows, might not have a described content behind them, but I still need to track against it. Let me give you an example. Um, working with an organization, a law enforcement agency, that whenever anything that was law enforcement sensitive, LES, it had a template or a cover page uh, attached to it. So what we did is we fingerprinted that cover page and said, if we got X number of percentage, 60% of that cover page within in an attachment, within an email. Uh, we found it on a file share, unprotected, unencrypted, etc. It generated a policy. And then from there, um, we could then work around it. Uh, another example would be that, um, you know, anything that um, might be no foreign, um, you know, uh, sensitive but unclassified, those would have templates or, or fingerprints that we could create uh, around that document and create a policy on that. Another way is maybe you have drawings for um, confidential information, whether that's a, a blueprint or a, um, 
or a CAD drawing or something like that, something that we can index and create a fingerprint of. Allows us to be uh, very targeted in unstructured data. And then our third one, by the way, I, I, I hope I spell structured right. So if I didn't, everybody can laugh at me and send me an email. Um, exact data matches is that structured data. Numbers, columns, rows, those types of things. Uh, an example of EDM would be I was working with a casino company and they had player club information. And that was the keys to the kingdom for them. They wanted to make sure that um, none of that player club information. So what we did is we created a, a match, a data match of all of their player club information. So that if it came across as, you know, in an email or an attachment that had, you know, Jesse and then yeah, as my last name and then my player club information, uh, it would be a match. But if it had, you know, Jones and my player club information, it would not be a match. Um, this allows us to build an exact data match. Um, you give us the data source and then we can build it uh, on. So you maybe you guys only want to track your employee social security numbers for some reason. So we uh, created an uh, EDM of those um, social security numbers that just match your employees. Or maybe you have credit cards, so your company credit cards we want to just match against. Um, so we can do an ongoing scheduled uh, rebuild of these documents, both an IDM and an EDM, so that they are uh, current and updated. Um, so let me kind of explain the process. Uh, you guys add a new employee, you update your, your data source, Semantic would, uh, DLP uh, would rebuild the, the EDM and then that policy would be updated. This is something that all resides locally within your organization. It's not like you're sending it out to Semantic for them to create the index or the EDM off of. It's all something that happens within your organization. So content match is a regular expression, our exact data match looking for a particular keyword, a document signature, our EDM, and you can see the technologies here on the side and also the areas that we can take a look at. Uh, file uh, attachment, file properties, file size, a particular protocol, et cetera, all stuff that we can match um, within the um, uh, policy. So content matches a data identifier. Let's go ahead and put in a credit card number, Go ahead, hit next, and then we're back to the severity, the breadth, and then any other additional um, identifiers on that. If you have questions on creating policies, feel free to send me an email um, and, or, or give me a call and we can uh, have a further conversation around that. So once again, uh, the better, the clearer that we are on our policies, the better our match count will be and the less false positives that we're at. Don't want to be too broad, or too narrow in our breadth or too wide. We're going to make sure that um, we hit it correctly. Oftentimes, there's a baselining period that we create our policies, we manage our policies, and, and go from there. I want to thank you for spending time watching this video, uh, an overview of using the Semantic DLP product as it relates to creating and managing policies. Uh, as I mentioned several times within this video, if you have any questions or comments, snide remarks, feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. Uh, thank you for spending time watching this video.